so welcome to episode number 51. <laughs> now we've been out for one year. One year, can you imagine? Time goes so quickly when you discover so much things. Yeah. One way it's been a very long time and in another sense it's been very fast. Yes. So we're going to summarize a little bit for you what we have been doing and uh, we, how long have we been sailing? We've been sailing 10,217 nautical miles. And out of those, it's approximately 6-7% with motor, mostly in and out of harbor. Yeah. But we used the engine 240 hours. I guess. Yeah. And how many countries? 13. Three on three continents. Yes, so we've been in Europe, Africa and America. And we have done 88 stops along the way. And uh, when we mean stops, it's places where we stop, drop anchor or, and yeah, stay for the night or the day. So. Yeah. And uh, for which one was your favorite of those 88? Can you remember one or two? I mean, going into, maybe this is because it's uh, top of mind now, but uh, New York, coming into New York uh, was a strong experience. Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I mean, the water in the Caribbean is fantastic. Bahamas is, of course, on the top list. It's probably the best one, I would say. Yeah, I have hard to choose actually. Yeah. It depends which mood you are in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Relaxing mode or adventure <laughs> mode or uh, hiking mode, uh, fixing mode or yeah, yeah. All different. Yeah. We started in Norway in Trondheim and sailed down to Ålesund and then across the North Sea to uh, Shetland Island and then to uh, Orkney Island and northern part of Scotland, out to Orkney Islands, and then south uh, towards Ireland, and then over to uh, Wales in UK, and then uh, down to France, the French Atlantic coast, and then a shortcut across the Bay of Biscay to northern part of Spain and uh, along the north of Spain, around here and down to Portugal. Along the coast of Portugal, across to uh, Morocco in Rabat, and then over the, to Lanzarote in the Canary Islands, and then to Gran Canaria where we uh, met up other Viking explorer, another 15 boats, and we sailed together down to uh, uh, Cape Verde and then across the Atlantic uh, here my brother John joined all the way from the Canary Islands over to the Caribbean over there and then we uh, follow the Caribbean excuse me I just step on the Atlantic Ocean the Caribbean uh, we uh, uh, came to uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and then a quick stop at uh, St. Lucia and up to Martinique, and here where the pandemic hit us, so we spent a lot of time there. Eventually we could go from there, then we went up to U.S. Virgin Island, which is a U.S. country, and then we planned to sail to the east coast of the U.S., so we started going here and then a storm came like this so we had to go back and we got permission to enter Bahamas. So we sailed through Bahamas and then up to Brunswick in uh, Georgia and then up to Charleston where we spent two weeks and then uh, along the coast here up to Chesapeake Bay and Annapolis and then to New York and Newport 
and now we are up in Maine, close to Portland. It's the best thing you have on board, yeah. except yeah. for all the, I mean, sail is a good thing to have on the sailboat. Oh. Everything uh, on the boat is uh, good to have, like the autopilot, the sails and so on, and the things that you made in, but the things that are brought from home, do you mean that? Yeah. Um, that you, like, oh, that you could recommend to everyone to have it, and uh, you wouldn't yeah. leave it without it. Yeah, uh, I left without it, but I bought it on the way, and it's an induction stove. It's really good to have because uh, you have those small bottles of gas and on some, in some way they just end up and then uh, you don't have any and then you have the induction. Yeah, and we've been using it yeah, a lot. It's been a saver. That's yeah. the best thing. I it's think. hard to use when you sail though. Because yeah, it's but you snow. have to <laughs> stand and hold the pot if you're, <laughs> if you're cooking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For me it's been the sewing machine. I didn't expect it to be that valuable uh, because we've been using it so many times. Uh, and helping others. Yeah, helping others as well. Uh, mm. Because it's just if one seam breaks, uh, it's so easy to fix right away. But if you don't fix it right away, it uh, ends up in disaster more or less. So we fixed the, the binimi and uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of sails and flags and clothes and everything. When we met uh, some other boats in the beginning, they asked what, what's the most odd thing you, ha uh, you have on board? Uh, <laughs> and I, uh, I, then I said, it's my pash stomp. It's a thing you do mashed with potatoes with without using any electricity. It's an old fashioned one. Yeah. But it's also good because you can knock down a fish with it. Yeah. <laughs> And actually, it's, I mean, we probably have things on board that we haven't used, uh, tools and like that, but the patch dump uh -huh. we, we've been using, yeah, now and then. Yeah. It's, but then we found something that's very <laughs> unusual to have on board because we brought our backpacks and we didn't, we were in a rush when we uh, left home. Uh, so uh, we found ski backs in one of the, uh, pockets. So, if some if other some sailors, sailors out there need ski wax for uh, minus uh, eight Celsius, you're welcome to visit us. Is it anything you miss from home? Yeah, except from family and friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I miss. Uh, I don't miss the caviar, but because we have had a source of that all the time. Uh, but there are some tastes and. And that I've been missing. We had the uh, anchovies from IKEA in Las Palmas, uh, which we made Johnson's Frestelse. That was very nice, and we can't do that anymore. But it's very few things that I am missing. Uh, I, I miss uh, the everyday life, uh, going to work, and very s similar days one after the other. Being on an adventure where we control all the time, we tend to push on uh, seeing new things and uh, and that's what we planned, but it's a constant new things all the time and having not new things all the time is something that I miss and uh, yeah, and also missing colleagues and stuff like that, but that's family and friends. <laughs> yeah. And you? Yeah, I miss uh, Monday to Friday work uh, a little bit, of course, because I miss colleagues and so, but that wasn't what we were supposed to say. And um, But I can miss being at home uh, by the fire, sit and having a Friday afternoon, planning for a hike in the week weekend, yeah, and go true. for a walk and maybe... Yeah. And the Bring the tent. And the skiing. Yeah, I th I think the, <laughs> the skiing in the morning. The hiking with the tents and the skiing in the morning. Uh, every Sunday and Saturday we skied in the morning and yeah. having the coffee uh, in the, yeah, after two hours of skiing. And it's a good feeling to get those 
to understand what you're missing because uh, if we return home one day that's what we're going to trying to that's the, the setup we want everything that we miss now uh, it's good because I, I, I didn't expect to say I miss work Monday to Friday <laughs> Oh, the best so far. It's really hard to choose, but to wake up every morning on Svea uh, and knowing that you are on an, an adventure and you're going to meet something new this day when you're waking up. It's I like that very much. But um, So it's really hard to pick, but I really like it to wake up go out, take a morning swim, and see what's in the water that day. I, I just love it, being so close to the nature. One of my favorite moments, absolutely favorite moments, uh, if you go to the nature, it was when we uh, ended up in Fair Isle in between Shetland Island and, uh, and Orkney Islands. It's in the middle of the sea, a small, small island with a rich bird life and a rich sea life. Uh, and we biked around the island the whole day and walked to different places and had so, such great views. Um, but then in the afternoon we ended up on a cliff where it was lots, lots, lots of puffins. And it was such an amazing time because you were so close to them and they were just like 25 centimeters from your nose and were walking around, flying out, getting fish, eating. Yeah, that was my nature wow moments. Yeah, and of course, after the crossing, when we saw land, that was also a an, an wow moment for me. And of course, the state of liberty. For me, the best part is the, yeah, the overall experience. But if I should pick up a few things, uh, out a few, few things, it's uh, the snorkeling. I really enjoy that. It's like, um, being close to nature, it's a um, challenge and uh, you can uh, improve and it's still so simple and close to nature. Uh, but the strongest thing that is uh, positive uh, is that we met uh, the family Winter. Uh, they, we spent every day in three months together with them and that was I didn't expect to do that uh, for us it uh, was a lot better in the sense that uh, we made more things it was more fun it was safer it was just a great experience and then we uh, learned to play uh, the Morocco game uh, it was just great to be two boats together and uh, getting best friends like you had uh, when you were uh, 10 years old. The worst things that I had experienced during this year is uh, it's really hard because I don't think we have had so much bad thing happened but uh, of course uh, the uncertainness we had felt during the Covid time, the first when the lockdown on Martinique and everything, I didn't feel comfortable with that. It was a hard time uh, not knowing about the future and what we were going to do and it was like a limbo. I didn't, I didn't like that. But we tried to do the best of it um, and not take one day in a time but it was I, I believed it was really hard um, and the worst thing during sailing okay now I know <laughs> it was when we left Las Palmas and after two days or if it was two and a half day our autopilot broke down and we had like so strong winds uh, from behind and um, big waves and the sea was really rough uh, and we had to hand steer the whole way to Cop Verde. Um, 
it wasn't, it, we, we managed to do it, but when we came to shore, I was so tired and shaky and happy and yeah. It, was, it took it a few days or 24 hours to calm down and get settled after that. The worst part for me is of course the pandemic uh, that messed everything up for us as well. Um, otherwise it's a very few things that has been a bad experience. Uh, being without the autopilot was not fun uh, and it took a lot of energy as well. Uh, one thing that I don't like is that I worry quite a lot. Uh, some days it's like I can find everything that, to worry about, especially on the boat, because you speak to other people that, oh, we, uh, we have problems with, uh, with the stove. And then you know, ah, oh, we have a stove as well, and then that can break, and or the steering, or the everything on board. You had uh, it, someone that has had problem with that. We haven't had much problems. It's the autopilot, but the worrying. I don't like to worry, and sometimes I just do that. Uh, I. A question that people asked a lot is uh, how can you stand each other living in such a small space? Uh, you are with each other all the time for 24 hours. Isn't that hard? But um, actually I don't feel it hard because we never, we almost never argue. And if we argue <laughs> it's because of me. <laughs> because I am, I am, Paul is very, he wants things to be in a way and he is really good to put back things, stuff where they should belong and I do that also but I also can forget to put it back at the same place and then someone is going to get it and don't find it and so, but I think we manage well. Um, we always said in the beginning of our journey because people were asking, what are you going to do if you get fed up with each other? And then we said, we have two, two sleeping rooms, so, or we go for a long sail. But um, I think it was just uh, during when we were in Martinique, I really needed to have some time by myself sometimes. And it was, then I took the dinghy ashore and took a walk and that, solved lots of problems <laughs> or, or stand in the line to get groceries <laughs> that was also <laughs> being by yourself time but I think we manage it good uh, I think uh, Paul has a harder time to st stick with me than I have to with him yeah so we manage I think you have to have a, a trust in each other and uh, rely on each other then it's we don't get to argue, yeah. Regarding the relationship with Lina, uh, it works really well, uh, even though we spend 24-7 <laughs> with each other. And that's quite cool that it works. I think one of the key is that we have different responsibilities that is very clear. Uh, and uh, I think we are pretty easy to, we, we don't seek conflicts and that's one of the good thing about our personalities. So, um, so far so good. Wow. We're getting nostalgic now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I couldn't say friends and family, but I miss my kids, Klaus and Maya. I love you <laughs> so much. 